I just can't believe I captured this miracle on camera. I grabbed my pick, it fell on the ground and it, it, it was right there. I, I just picked it up. <laughs> okay, so now on topic. So what you're about to hear is the same chord on the same guitar fitted with the same top. The only difference? The tone woods for the back and sides. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Welcome to part two of the ultimate acoustic guitar comparison video and in part one we looked at all the body shapes, I'm sure you've seen it, and now we're looking at the most controversial topic for guitars, the tone woods. We start out with comparing the different woods used for the back and sides of the guitars and the differences are huge. Then we take a look at the top woods and again I did not know this had such an impact on the sound. Let's go. So first we're gonna listen to the differences between rosewood and mahogany and I'd love to hear your first reaction. Leave them in the comment section because I'm in for a hot debate. Mahogany and rosewood, Indian rosewood. Mahogany has that very, very specific characteristic where it has a lot of gray mids, so you can always hear it very well in a mix. A Vox AC30 with EL84 tubes is very much what a mahogany does. It's, it cuts right in the middle. But if you switch to the rosewood, it's like a, rosewood is like, like a very good red wine. It's got more lows, it's got more highs, less mids, a more delicate sound and I always compare it to, to a Fender Twin Weaver. There's a lot of sound. If you, if you have to describe mahogany, it cuts right through. It yeah. has that specific projection, it's got a lot of mid doesn't have that much uh, lows, yeah. uh, so it really is always audible in any kind of circumstance. That's uh, funny. Easily recordable, yeah. and that's really what, what mahogany does. When you go to, to rosewood, there's much more low to start yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, it's got less mids and it's got more highs. So the range, mm. the dynamic range of a rosewood guitar is always gonna be bigger than the, than the mahogany one. Yeah. as a strummer it's like a strummer's favorite the mahogany sort of serves the chords so beautifully <laughs> just works so beautiful with that mid-range for the, the, the rosewood it's, it's Here the top end, just that crisp on top. If that's something you're after, I think that crisp is something to look for, and you will find that crisp more in the rosewood than in the. In the yeah, market. and then the lows, of course. The lows yeah. are, are just, but that's sometimes. And and I always say you have like rosewood people and mahogany people. <laughs> where I all my life, I've always even blindfolded. I always went for the mahogany guitars. Oh, that's and that funny, is that's funny. that is it because it's so personal. Yeah. I think it depends on what kind of player you are. Yeah. If you play in a band, you might favor a different kind of guitar. I play a lot of solo guitar because, you know, I'm all the time alone in my studio. So then I feel like the rosewood accommodates just the whole spectrum a little bit better than just the mahogany. But in a band setting, when there's a singer going on, or there's a piano player, or there's a lot of people, the mahogany probably will sit in the mix a little bit better, right? Absolutely, and the, the, the frequency range that you get on rosewood is just much bigger. There's like, for instance, Sapelli. Sapelli that is very, very close to mahogany. 
um, and Sapali has the same characteristics. It's a little cheaper to, to, to find and to use, so often it's on a little bit more low-end guitars. Not, it's not anything worse than mahogany, but it grows faster, so it's easier to, to get. But then there's a couple of other more tropical woods, like, for instance, uh, maple, although maple is perhaps not a tropical wood, but maple is something that is often used on the jumbo size. The maple is much lighter in tone and, and, and gives a nice counterbalance to that. So you got the 17 inch big body and at the same time the maple evens that up. So this is the maple back and I'm sure we can all see the differences now because maple just looks so different than the rest. Of course maple usually it's white so this, this one is stained. Yeah, right? it's, yeah it's stained but it's got the flame. Yeah. That's one of the things where here you see on the mahogany, it's got the, uh, the vertical grain yeah. where uh, maple, if you have a nice flame maple, it's always going to be horizontal. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we heard the differences between mahogany and rosewood all the time, but now we also have maple in the mix. Okay, so maple. Yeah, well the good, the good thing with maple is that it's, it's got a very light tone, there's less bass, there's more highs. So that means, for instance, on the, on the, the AC guitars, so the, like what I always say, like the stage guitars, yeah. it's very good because there's a, there's a pickup in this guitar, so if you're on stage, you can be assured that with a maple back and sides, you have way less problems with, with feedback, stuff like that. Ah, so cool. it's also very practical to yeah. use it on a guitar like that. The sound is very different from mahogany and rosewood. Yeah. And, and it, it, because these guitars are all exactly the same, with exactly the same specs, apart from the backs. That's <laughs> it. So the maple um, in an acoustic situation would deliver a little bit more highs, yeah. a little less low end. Yeah, more projection probably, more. I think, on this guitar. Cool. <laughs> A lot of lot of projection and every yeah. note is yeah. very very well audible and it's it's also I, I always think a little sophisticated <laughs> yeah it's a very clear sound indeed because the low end doesn't fight for the attention no. there is there's almost no difference they've got a European spruce top which we will talk about later but the maple mahogany and rosewood those timbers they are giving the difference in sound sides are super important I know yep. that but there's also the top and yep. we didn't talk about it yet no 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 we haven't touched on that topic and uh, topic that's a uh, topic tops yeah oh yeah, yeah. Top. yeah. Top a little bit slow today yeah. sorry <laughs> the most commonly used uh, top wood is Sitka spruce Sitka spruce uh, well you can find it uh, on, on I perhaps 80% of all guitars, acoustic guitars being made, a very versatile wood that is capable of almost anything and uh, it has a very beautiful grain so there's not a lot of notches and, 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 and brown streaks so it, it speaks to a, a big audience and it does its job perfectly. Imagine uh, like, a, like a Martin D28 that has a Sitka spruce top, everybody knows that guitar so that, that will be a good comparison. go from that Sitka spruce and you look at what else there is for a top wood, then the most commonly known is the Adirondack spruce, the red spruce. The red spruce, uh, Adirondack is a spruce that is stiffer 
and um, has a lot more volume and is also not as attractive looking as Sitka. It's more expensive. Uh, the Adirondack always has like wider grains, so, so uh, when you really want to have that really beautiful uh, spruce without many, many streaks or brown strikes or, or knots or dots, it, it probably is not Adirondack. But in bluegrass, Adirondack is the go-to top wood. this close together and you can actually tell the difference quite easily if you zoom in on the instruments a little bit. Yeah. One is very straight grained and very narrow and the Adirondack is a little bit more wobbly usually and a wider yeah. grain, right? Yeah, Adirondack is a much stiffer top wood. When they start using it, suddenly they realize that this was the perfect top wood for these, uh, these acoustic guitars, especially for those dreadnoughts, because it was so loud. Adirondack has mm. much more sound, much more yeah. volume than Sitka. Sitka is more subdued, more beautiful, more even, but the Adirondack is really loud and makes you be heard. So for bluegrass, for instance, I mean, <laughs> I don't think there is a bluegrass player out there who doesn't prefer the, the, the Adirondack Sitka. Let me give an instant reaction. Oh, wow. Wow, that's even bigger than I thought, the difference. So much more volume, but also a little less rounded off. A little bit yeah. more sc screamy is a bad yeah, word. It's, um, it's, but it's, 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 a, it's yeah. a loud, it's, it screams <laughs> for your attention. Exactly, yeah. And then especially with the big dreadnought, it's just like, oh, it's all there. <laughs> Yeah, if Eddie Rondack, or if a dreadnought is the, the piano under the acoustic guitars, then Eddie Rondack even adds to that. I think people have the tendency to prefer loud sounds when they just have to compare an A-B, but louder isn't always better. So that's maybe important to note as well. Eddie Rondack is a more expensive wood, so that's why you most of the time will find that on the higher priced instruments. Yeah, but doesn't mean it's better. A matter just, of taste. Exactly. Then you have European spruce, mostly coming from like like uh, Italy, uh, Bosnia, uh, Swiss, Switzerland, uh, Swiss Alpine spruce, which is often lighter in color and even more beautiful than the Sitka. The European spruce is, is probably the best looking uh, top wood there is. It's very, very light in color and there's almost no grain. So those are the three most important top woods. Next to that, very distinctively different looking, you have the cedar wood. Most of the time used on uh, classical guitars, because we're talking about steel string guitars, but on a classical guitar, nylon string guitar, cedar is used, but also cedar, you can find cedar, for instance, on Loudon guitars, also on Eastman guitars, and it has a, a very, very dark woody tone. And from dark woody tone, it's an easy step to mahogany, which is sometimes also used for the top. Um, you can get more woody than a mahogany top guitar. So that is about the, the most commonly used. And there's many, many others, but that's 80, 90% of the guitars, perhaps even 95 are fitted with a top like that. Something that, that, that has been happening in the last few years a lot uh, Dana Bourgeois being one of the first doing it, it is actually baking the tops. So here you have an Adirondack top that has been baked, which allows the wood to become like 60-year-old wood. And it has that, that, that tone and that sound.
So one thing that immediately stood out for me is that it feels a little bit more like a vintage guitar, right? It sounds warmer, a little bit uh, rounded off, not as bright, but super rich. When you torrefy the wood, and we call it thermocure, we do it in our own kilns, it extracts the moisture out of it and it makes suddenly makes you jump like 60 years. So this <laughs> guitar, that's why it also looks that way. And it's obviously looks yeah. are just as important as, uh, as, as, as sound. <laughs> it's not for everybody because some might really like the more highs on the uh, non-torrified Adirondack, where others really prefer that the worn-in warm. warmth. <laughs> not only taking highs off but it feels like it's adding actually something yep. in the in, in the mid lows absolutely it, it, yeah. it adds something all right so um let's sum it up back in size rosewood mahogany bellsy versus earthy yeah like scoop mids versus very present mids maple back in sides a little bit less low end yeah, more, more, more uh, open, more, more, more open, sparkly, more high end, a little bit bellsy yeah. on top. Yeah. Cool. Now to the tops. We've got the basic, or should I say, the brilliant Sitka Spruce. Yeah, the standard, the industry standard. Yeah. Every guitar manufacturer uses 80% of their. You their just builds. can't go wrong with Sitka no, Spruce. Just, absolutely. It is what you expect from a guitar. Then there's Adirondack, which takes that Sitka Spruce and elevates it into a little bit louder sounding guitar. A little bit more screamy, maybe not as balanced, but definitely packing a punch. Yeah, and more focus, more and more and more smack to the face. Yeah, and then we can even set the thing on fire, <laughs> figuratively, yeah, yeah. and turn it into a torrified top, and then it becomes a little bit more rounded off again, mellower, sounding more like a vintage guitar. Yeah, going back a little step to Sitka but with more volume. Coco Bolo obviously is a, is a... I once spoke to Bill Collings and he told me that he hated working with Coco Bolo because obviously it's one of the, the worst woods to work with. It's very oily, but it's beautiful. There's Ziricote, there's Black Walnut. And all these woods have a, an identity of their own. Like Black Walnut sits right in the middle between mahogany and uh, rosewood. But I don't want to bring too many different woods. We're talking about the majority. We're talking about 80% of the guitars. I mean, Koa is also, I forgot Koa, grows in Hawaii. Incredibly good looking uh, wood. So there's, there's so many choices, but lucky enough also so many tastes. Fretboards. The fretboards. Are these important to the tone? They are in important to the tone because uh, practically all the fretboards that we use are ebony. Yeah. Uh, also for the uh, for the bridge and ebony is just a very very dense thick wood yeah. that also contributes uh, to the highs on the guitar so it's very good where rosewood if used as a, a fingerboard and, and bridge it's more earthy more more a little uh, uh, more woody sounding but obviously these sounds don't have as much influence as for instance having a mahogany or a rosewood back and sides yeah. or an eddie rondeg and a sitka yeah. it's more subtle but the differences are also there yeah 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 it's all the ingredients together i can make very good decisions from now on like when i go into a guitar store i can just say hey i would like to try a mahogany back and side with a sitka uh, top and if, if i don't like the sound i can just change certain elements till i find exactly what i'm looking for Absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that's all what we want to do is just give you, give you more choices and 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 to find the guitar that that is your guitar that speaks to you. Yeah, exactly, brilliant. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you for watching and thank you for having us. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Eastman, Papa and Heart. Of course, also watch video one where we talk about body shapes extensively. Uh, it's a two-part video, so you can make the best decision into buying guitars. Have a lovely day. And see you next time. See you. Bye-bye. Cheers.